I'm going to show you how to add a matrix chart to a PowerPoint deck using the Engage add-in. So first you just want to make sure that you have the Engage tab selected. From there, click on Infographics. And if you scroll down, you'll notice the matrix chart here. So click on that and then click on the Insert button. And this will draw the matrix chart. And we'll also open this uh, matrix dialog window that you can use to update the values and also uh, configure the matrix. Um, so what we're gonna do here is, uh, I'm just gonna close this and we'll just take a look at the matrix chart. I'll um, bring this down a bit. And uh, what you see here is a two by two matrix. So uh, you've got multiple dimensions of data and what you're showing here is, um, uh, coldest weather to warmest weather, and then the most dry to the most wet. So anything in this top right uh, quadrant is something, is an area, a city that um, gets a lot of rain and is also very warm. And anything that in is in this bottom left quadrant is a place that is uh, fairly cold and mostly dry. And so based on um, this data, I can quickly tell that this is not real data uh, because London is, is this bottom left quadrant. Um, <clears throat> but if I click on this infographic and I click on these two gears, it reopens the dialog box. And so <clears throat> every infographic is tied to an Excel embedded worksheet. And uh, if I click on the edit data button, it will open that Excel worksheet. And so over here, I see in column A, my uh, name of the cities that I have in the matrix, and I have the X values. Uh, so that is to say um, the amount of rain each city gets. So perhaps this value is measured in the um, total amount of uh, centimeters uh, in rain for each city by year. And then I have the Y values, which represents the um, temperature, uh, the average temperature for those cities. Um, so this might be expressed as uh, degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, finally, uh, column D is the size of the points. So uh, in this case, um, uh, it's a population, but again, it could be anything. Uh, it's whatever data drives the size of the points. So uh, we can see that New York, in this case population, has the highest population, and so it has the, the biggest uh, point. And then finally, the fourth dimension of data is the fill, uh, the fill color. So again, uh, in this case, it's population density, but it could be uh, anything that would drive uh, the color of the point. Uh, but in this case, again, New York is the most uh, densely populated city and therefore uh, has the darkest uh, blue. Uh, so as long as you maintain the integrity of this uh, format of this spreadsheet, you can add as many rows of data as you wish. Um, so for example, if I were to uh, update um, the uh, precipitation uh, score for New York City, and if I were to make it uh, far more dry, uh, we should see New York point move towards the left of the X axis. Um, and then if I make it uh, much colder, um, I should also see it move down along the Y axis to uh, a colder city. So if I did um, a smaller value there, and um, as well, oh, I guess I did that for Sydney. Let me just update that and do that for New York. And uh, finally, uh, the size of the dot, if I make this um, a smaller value, you'll notice that the New York point gets much smaller. And again, uh, in terms of the population density, if I uh, accord it a much, um, lower value relative to the other cities, um, you'll notice that it uh, gets much lighter in color as well. Um, so what I can do here, uh, I don't need to save this file. I can just close it because it's uh, automatically embedded in Excel. And then I'll close this uh, window just to show uh, the change. So New York used to be this big 
point that was dark blue over here, a uh, very wet, very warm city. And now uh, what we see is it's uh, amongst, or it is the coldest and the most dry and uh, one of the smaller cities in terms of population. So the size of the dot and, um, and as well, um, in terms of density, we see the population density represented by the fill color is much lighter than, uh, than it was before. So that's the uh, matrix chart. If you click on it again, and if you click on the gears, uh, there's a couple other options here. Um, so the min and the max values are, uh, for the range, they're automated, but if I want to um, make uh, changes and update this myself, I can um, make the matrix uh, wider uh, or uh, taller, depending on the min and max values that I accord. So again, for the Y values, the max is um, auto at 17. But if I want uh, to increase that to 25, I can do that. And what that should do is it should bring all the values in the chart um, towards the, uh, the inside. Uh, I can also change the labels, like this is most wet. Uh, I can change this to most rain. Um, and then finally, in terms of the point size, again, the same idea. I can change the max min values, and then I can also change um, the ranges. So if I, for example, um, I see London is probably uh, the max. Uh, if I change this range to a six, uh, what will happen is that um, London uh, gets affected and uh, is no longer in uh, that range at all. So it just shows as a as a dot. Um, but I don't want to do that. I'll just keep it auto to represent the true value. And uh, the same goes here with the fill range. Um, I can also change the colors. So if I want to change the min values, I can make those green. If I just want more contrast between um, these two values, I can do that. And the other thing I could do is I could um, Decide not to show the exterior board if I want a cleaner look. Uh, I can also decide to turn on and on the uh, point labels. So I'll keep those on. Um, but if you had a lot of points and what you were trying to show was maybe a pattern um, where the names of the labels didn't matter as much, um, you could choose to turn those off. And uh, finally, what, what you can do is you can add legends here. So um, for the uh, population size. Um, uh, so I can keep what I had there or update this. I can do that. And uh, same with the fill range. This was population density. So I'll keep this as such. And I'll just close this and I'll close this dialog window. And I'll just grab um, this legend. So maybe what I'll do is I'll keep the population one here and I'll move the population density there. And so um, that's the matrix chart.